I'm Luis Scott, managing partner of Bader Scott Injury Lawyers, one of the fastest growing law firms in the country. And I'm also the co-founder of Eight Figure Firm Consulting. I've successfully built multiple companies by focusing on leadership, operations, and culture. Using these principles, my companies have generated close to $100 million in revenue. But before any of this success, I started my legal career as a receptionist, and I worked my way up to becoming managing partner. In each episode of this podcast, I sit down with leaders and entrepreneurs who have had the guts to step out on their own and the courage to face adversity. They share with us their tips for achievement, the challenges they have faced, and the glory of success. I welcome you to the Guts and Glory Show. Luis Scott here, host of the Guts and Glory Show. I feature top leaders who share the obstacles and challenges of leadership, the guts it takes to succeed, and the glory of success. Today, you will hear another inspiring interview from entrepreneur and author Lee Hayward, who helps elite service professionals increase sales and make lasting impacts by crafting a business image for a performance edge in the moments that matter. But before we get started, I want to give a sponsor message, which is uh, Eight Figure Firm Consulting. At Eight Figure Firm, we help law firms take their businesses from seven figures to eight figures by keeping lawyers aw away from the work that they hate so that they can focus on making the impacts they love. Uh, we can show you how to develop a business that works for you instead of you working for the business. So turn your law firm into a law business by going to eightfigurefirm.com. Before I give this introduction, I want to give a special shout out to Kristen David from Up Leveling Your Business for introducing me uh, to today's guest, Lee Hayward, who is the best-selling author and image strategist, founder of The Prosperous Image, a consulting firm that helps clients get an edge in the moments that matters. She works with elite service professionals to curate a personal and business brand that gives them a decisive advantage in their industry. She's also the author of the book, Strategically Suited, and she believes that an image is a powerful marketing tool that you always have access to. And I agree with her. So Lee, thank you for being on the show. Welcome to the Guts and Glory show. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Absolutely. I, I was very excited about this, uh, about this interview. In fact, for those of you who are listening uh, on, on the podcast and can't see, uh, you're going to want to check out the video because uh, for the first time ever on my podcast, I am wearing a suit and tie uh, for this interview. So I wanted to make sure that I came prepared for the interview. Um, and we're going to be talking about how important image is uh, to your success. And I really, really believe this. Um, I, I want to just jump right into this before we get to know a little bit more about your business and talk about something that, that you have on your website, which I agree with, but I want to hear it from you. And, and you say on your website, it's not enough just to make yourself look good. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that and what that means. Yeah, absolutely. Well, for everyone, just so you know, I give Lewis a stamp of, of approval. He looks great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Time. So, yeah, I think that a lot of times getting dressed is something that we learn from our mothers, um, people in the community. You were allowed to wear this to school, allowed to wear this, all these places. And it became this sort of thing that you should do. You should look professional. You should look a certain way. And that's kind of how it's been stamped in everybody's mind. And so a lot of people think they just need to show up at Nordstrom or wherever and get some clothes that look good and all will be sorted out. But the problem with that, with that is that it's literally a Band-Aid. So if you just put some stuff on that looks good, it will work for a certain amount of time, but it's a little bit like a strainer. Eventually the stuff falls out because you have never built it on the foundation of who you are and where you're going. And that's the mm. most important piece because I tell all my clients, you're not actually getting dressed for who you are today. You're getting dressed for where you're going, the person you want to wow. be in five years. Yeah, that, that's awesome that you say that. I mean, I think it, it, and it extends to more than just what you wear. I, I, I know you talk about alignment uh, and how you have to align your office and the, the things that surround you. Uh, recently, I was talking to uh, my assistant and I got in his car because we were going to lunch and his car was uh, a little bit dirty. And uh, he said somebody had borrowed it or something like that. And so I said, come on, man, you got to you got to have this car in better shape than that. You can't pick me up in this car, you know, and I think it even extends to that who that is. And you have a story of someone you recently met who kind of didn't portray the right image. Yeah. And it's funny because these are the details that you think don't matter, but they like seep into people's brains mm -hmm. and start to like tweak the impression that you've made with people. So here's what happened. My husband and I refinanced our house. It was a situation where the lawyer came to our house to sign the paperwork. And 
my husband was already home. The lawyer got here before I did. So I drive in and he's got this white car and it is covered <laughs> in bird poop. Like, oh I'm, my gosh. I'm just like, oh, whoopsie, like covered. And I'm like, because I ask a lot of questions and I'm going to go straight to the point. I like walk in the door and I'm like, dude, what happened to your car? <laughs> like, I'm expecting this miraculous story about like a pterodactyl uprising or like something cool to have that much poop. And he was like, no, I live with a driveway. There's a tree and the birds poop in my car every day. And so A, I'm totally disappointed because the story is now boring. And B, the whole time we're signing and going through this closing, I'm just like, you passed four car washes on the way to my house. Yeah. I didn't drive through and you didn't wash your car. So this is where my head is. Like what detail did you miss in this work that you're doing mm. for me? Because now that's, that's what I'm thinking about you. Like that you have, you're just not really attentive to details, but here's the biggest problem. I wrote the book you mentioned. There's a chapter in the book that's called the bird shit lawyer. <laughs> um, I don't know what his name is. I don't know what the firm is. Like, I can't refer this guy. I can't do anything. I just call him, you know, the right. person there. So it's a total missed opportunity just because his car was dirty. That is so true. You know, I've, I've recently heard that the way you do anything is the way you do everything. And the last thing you want to do is portray an image of not paying attention to detail, especially in like a professional service business. Um, so that is, that is so disappointing. You know, I'm, I'm curious, how did you get into this industry? Cause you know, th there's not a lot of, uh, uh, majors, college majors that are dedicated to branding your image, uh, in a holistic approach. Like how did you even get into this? Yeah. So it's kind of interesting cause I am the rare story of like the little girl who true story in fourth grade. If you were my friend, I was like, let's go through your closet. Like let's design <laughs> what you're going to wear next week at school. Like my poor friend. And I loved it. I always loved it. And then That's I awesome. went to college to be a lawyer actually, and ended up getting a sales oh, wow. job and would, would drive around imagining either going to law school or creating my own business. Um, and so one day I just quit and was like, all right, I wrote a press release. It mm. got into a local newspaper and I was like, okay, I guess I'm doing this. So I essentially was like, I can help you look great, feel good and get all the things done. And that eventually transitioned into only specifically working with high level entrepreneurs because the, your image overall, both your personal brand and the business throughout is such a key piece of your growth. And I just mm -hmm. find that like developing that strategy so much fun. I agree with that. You know, and the thing is working in your passion is what, what really makes life so much more enjoyable. And so being able to find that passion, I bet is, is, is just a, a great joy for you. You know, when I think about consulting, I, I think about what I do uh, as a profession, uh, being a lawyer or even maybe a medical doctor and so forth. Um, these type of service businesses can be a challenge to start. So I'm curious about your start and how, what were some of the challenges that you faced um, starting this consulting practice after you got that first published article and now you're like, I'm going to make money doing this. Like, what were some of the challenges that you faced? Well, number one, like you mentioned, like there was no degree for this. My degree is in political mm -hmm. science and business administration. So that, <laughs> I mean, maybe on some days will help, but not really. Um, so number one, I had to learn how to run a business. And number two, mm -hmm. I had to learn how to tell other people besides my friends, you know, how to do this and create a system doing it. And I mean, I kid you not, like this is funny, but there used to be a show on TLC, the learning channel uh -huh. um, called What Not to Wear. Oh, I know that show. Okay. All right. So I was already <laughs> watching it. And so I, I just started watching it and like teaching myself. I already did a lot of it naturally. Like no joke. I mean, I taught myself all kinds of things from watching <laughs> what not wow. to wear. And then like reading every book I could get my hands on. And then I grew the business by doing two things. Back in the day when like teleseminars were unheard of, I was doing okay. teleseminars every other week on any, any topic that people had any interest Incredible. in, I was doing a teleseminar. And what's interesting is in the beginning, I was making scripts, like I was scripting it out and then pretending like I wasn't reading and yada, yada. And that actually translated into my first book. Like I never realized that was going to happen, but I had taught on all of these subjects and it, it turned into a book. Um, that's but that's awesome. how I built the client base. And then I met, um, one of my mentors, David Nagel, and sort of said yes to some things that seemed crazy. And, and here we are 12 years later. 
That's incredible. Now, what was the, you talked about mentorship and I think mentorship is such a big part of being an entrepreneur, being a business owner, really growing yourself. What was something that you learned from uh, David that really helped propel your business? Oh gosh. I mean, it's hard to pick just one, but David is responsible for a huge turning point in my business. Mm -hmm. Um, There was a time where I don't know how I ended up here. Somebody sent me an email that was like, come to this thing. And I was like, okay. And I signed up and I paid the money, which was a ridiculous amount of money. I'm pretty sure I was making like maybe $40,000. Like I, this was yeah. in the beginning. I had not made any money. And this was a specific elite group of people who mm. were making a lot of money. Right. And I don't know how I ended up there. And then I ended up in front of David talking to him and he said, you know, well, I want you to work with me. And I was like, I don't work with men. And he just said two words to me. Why not? Mm. And that is so simple and such an interesting thing to consider still to this day. Like, why not? And a lot of times there are plenty of reasons like for why Mm -hmm. not, but sometimes you don't have a good reason. I had no reason other than like, um, I just haven't done it yet. Yeah. So, so simple game changer. That, that mindset change is so critical too, to really, you know, helping you grow in your, in your business. Now you, you mentioned, uh, you didn't work with men and, you know, I have found that men really undervalue the importance of their image. I, I don't know how many times I've seen, you know, men, they show up to a soccer field with their kids or they show up to any kind of event and they're just so sloppy. And, and what would you tell men who are like that? Like, cause I think that that's important, especially as a, as a professional, as an entrepreneur or someone, even if you're an employee, like what would you tell that person if they're a man who doesn't focus on their image? Well, I mean, the thing is man or woman, you are representing yourself everywhere you mm-hmm. go. So I tell my clients like every day, everywhere you go, you show up. Mm-hmm. Now that doesn't make, so people are listening to this right now. Like, Oh God, that sounds like a pain in the ass. Like, no, thanks. It's not meant <laughs> yeah. to be difficult. It just means that whatever is in your closet is available for you to wear is aligned with you and where you want to go. I think one of the challenges for men is, and this isn't everybody. So this is a little bit of a blanket statement, but sure. You know, as a girl, I was like clipping out things through magazines. I was like all the time mm-hmm. thinking about this stuff, just not on most, the most radar of most men. So a lot of times they go from their moms being a huge influence of what they wear right. to college, beginning of life. So you wear like what you should wear a professional and then you get married and like, how awesome is it that your wife buys you clothes? So, like, it's <laughs> right. a beautiful thing where you don't have to put any effort to it. But the problem is, is you never have defined who you actually are in that scenario. And you will get to a certain level where, you know, people are buying you no matter what you're doing, no matter what you're selling, Mm. where you have to be authentic and you have to really be showing up. And so that's what I like to have people think about it. Like what could be if you really were certain about who you were from the inside out? Yeah. I mean, that's such a, such an important thing because you're, you're viewing it through the prism of, of personal brand, but really it's, it's all about how do you feel about yourself? Um, and how are you reflecting that into the world? I think that that's really what we're trying to answer. Like, do we really understand who we are and are we reflecting that properly to other people so that they can, they can experience us the way that we really should be and who we really are. So it's really important. You know, I have found that, that confidence, uh, goes hand in hand with how you look, how you dress your image and so forth. What, what, have you seen in terms of confidence levels when people really start projecting who they are as an individual? Oh, it's unbelievable what will happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, unbelievable. And it's not because of the clothes that they put on. So it's not because they all of a sudden are wearing a certain designer or a certain brand or spend a certain amount of money. It's because what happened is you figured out something on the inside and then you matched it to the outside in a way that just Mm -hmm. makes you completely forget about what you're wearing but you just, you stand differently. Um, I mean, I can't tell you countless people who, I had a guy who was an engineer who we worked together on a Friday. He goes in on a Monday and his goal when we were going through this transition was like that he really wanted to be promoted within six months. And we're like, okay, here's where you're going. Here's what we're going to do. Monday morning, 10 o'clock, his boss calls him in and is like, dude, are you interviewing for other jobs? (laughs) <laughs> and the only reason he asked him is because like he looked different like he looked nice like he might be going somewhere yeah else. and he wasn't but what was interesting is that one tweak 
created this opportunity, this new confidence for his boss to like see him in a different way. And he was promoted way faster than, you know, he originally thought he would be. Right. So it, it's pretty amazing what can happen. I, I definitely can see that happening. I, I, somebody told me recently about how you should dress for the job you want, not the job you have. And I think that that's all part of, you know, uh, setting yourself up for success. Now, um, I, I saw something, uh, an article uh, that you that you uh, wrote about on Facebook, and you talked about how it's important to dress that way for your spouse. Um, and I yeah. and I and and I I would love to hear what that means because you know you mentioned earlier men get married and then the next thing you know they don't do anything with themselves. Like, tell us about that. So, and that's going to be a Facebook Live that's happening tomorrow um, with a relationship expert. But it's an interesting concept. So. I think the first thought that people are going to have when they see that is like, oh, I'm not going to dress for my spouse. Like we're already married, you know, whatever. Yeah. But the idea really is like, what if you were putting out the extra effort to go back to that confidence point that you had to make yourself feel mm. amazing? Like how much more patience would you have with that person? How much more um, would you go out of your way because you simply feel better about yourself? Mm -hmm. um, and then there's, of course, just the aesthetic attraction, you know, sort of image piece of it, too, is like, you know, there are certain things that I wear that make my husband a little more excited than others. And I feel like <laughs> sure. throw them out. Yeah, I can definitely relate because, you know, in COVID world, uh, we've been a lot of people have been working from home and uh, my wife's job that she's been working from home. And so it's very easy for her to wear, you know, uh, uh, something more comfortable, like a, a, a athleisure wear or something like that. Uh, but the other day I got home and she was like fully dressed up. Like I'm talking about like head to toe dressed up. And I, I looked and I was like, where are you going? She's yeah. like, nowhere. We're just going to, we're going to eat at home. And I was like, no, we're not. We're going out right now. You know, and it, it went from a, we're eating at the house to going out on a date night. So, I mean, what you wear really makes a, a huge difference. Now I, I, I'm curious about this question because uh, I've even heard some of my employees talk about how for Halloween, they're going to be a Zoom employee and they were going to have like just their top, their, you know, their jacket on top and they were going to wear like shorts on the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, I've always thought you should still dress the part, even though you're on Zoom and can't be seen. What's your opinion on that? Oh boy. I mean, this is like a can of worms you have just opened. <laughs> you know, a whole other thing on this, but I'll summarize. So here's the thing. No matter what, every day, you have to get dressed, okay? So in, in theory, you got to get dressed. Mm -hmm. So why not put on stuff that is going to get some sort of result, whatever it is that you want? You're dressing for two people all the time. Number one is yourself. Number mm -hmm. one is to make yourself feel confident. Number two is to make others feel confident in you. So... With that in mind, you got to get fully dressed, man. Like the fact yeah. that you have to stand up, um, you know, like I did a call recently where my dog got up and knocked over the lights, you know, and I had to get up <laughs> and fix it, you know, so things are going to happen. And we've seen all sorts of funny things And the, boy, the yeah. pictures of people in court, like in their bed and like, I mean, it's amazing. But what's happening is every time people see you on Zoom, it's either increasing the way they think mm. about you or decreasing the way they think right. about you. And if you're just not putting right. the effort in, it's going to sort of chip away at that impression that you've worked so hard to make. And I think that people feel like they can get away with it, but really you eventually find out that the person was not fully dressed, you know, and if you're not, if you're not taking the time to really get fully dressed, I mean, are you putting the full effort into your job too? I mean, there's so many, there's so many like uh, uh, subconscious things that I think that people they don't really concentrate on. Now, one of the issues and challenges I had as a young uh, professional, as a young entrepreneur was, was the money, right? And I'm sure you hear the money objection or the, the, the money issue. I don't have the money to buy the clothes. I don't have the money to have a nice car. I don't have the money to have a nice office. I don't, and wh what would you tell people in that scenario? Like how can you make yourself better and have a better image when you don't really have the money to, per, you know, to portray that image? Like, what would you tell them? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I mean, I'm not going to say like money doesn't help you have a better image because sure, it can make it easier, but it can't be an excuse either. So if you desire to put yourself into the world a certain way, it can be done. Um, 
one of the most fantastic things that's happening right now is that recycling clothing is cool. So there are so right. <laughs> many versions of sort of online consignment stores that have everything you could possibly need in every size that you need in amazing price points. Um, you know, shopping mm. sale racks, there is absolutely nothing wrong with shopping sales or sale racks. Sometimes I know in business, you know, you start, you start hearing they're like, you know, you're investing in yourself, stop wasting your time with sales. And sure that can be true. But what you're really just being true to is who you want to show up as. So like if the $5 shirt is going to help you do that, great. If it's not, leave it. Right. Um, so I think it's more of a mindset shift of like, you have to do the work to get the result that you want. And mm. then it does become easier. So you may have to go to 10 stores to find what you need in the budget that you want. But once right. you have it, you don't have to go anywhere for a while. That's right. Um, same online. And it's kind of, I like to remind people that when you are shopping, 50% of what you either take into a dressing room or have shipped into your house, it's just not going to work. It doesn't. It doesn't right. fit. You don't like it, whatever. And so it's not about you. It's about does this get the result you want? And if not, let it move on. Right. Now, you're talking a lot about how you want to portray on the outside what you are on the inside. Um, how does a person, without getting into the full complexity of, of what you do, but how does a person yeah. actually get to that point? Like, where do I, you know, how do I actually get to the point where I know who I am as, a, as an individual? So there's a really easy exercise that everybody can do and start thinking about. And it's a, it's a simple question. It's a simple question that, you mm. know, sometimes it's not as simple to answer, but to start thinking about it is not mm. how do I want, not how do I want to look? You ask yourself, mm. how do I want to feel? Mm, okay. Okay. So most people, when they start thinking about putting an image together, they'll start talking to me about, I want to look put together and I want to look this way and that way. It doesn't matter. I only need to know how you want to feel. Mm. So I want to feel powerful, badass, confident, um, you know, whatever right. it is, unique, like a unicorn. I mean, like whatever, <laughs> sassy, like whatever you, whatever yeah. rocks your boat, that you're a thing. And just, I get people to sort of like, just kind of word vomit as many adjectives as they can and then go back and sort of circle your top three or four. And those become the roadmap of, all mm -hmm. right, you can literally stand in front of the mirror with these words and say like, does this make me feel powerful, confident and approachable, whatever it is. Right. Wow. Re what a good exercise to do. Now in, in, in your business in 12 years, you, you've mentioned being in business 12 years and it, and it wasn't always as great as it is now. Um, what would you say is the gutsiest thing you've ever had to do to really get your business off the ground uh, and, and get it to where you have it today? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I don't know that this is like a dramatic gutsy thing, but honestly, it's just, it was the reason I am here today is because I said yes. Mm. Um, and that's simple. And a lot of times you get into a point in your business where you can't say yes, but like, Opportunities, we, opportunities would show up. I know I mentioned David Nagel earlier. Um, one of the things I did that was in, seemed insane to me at the time was <laughs> they sold me a sponsorship where I like went to an <laughs> event. I'd never been to an event. I didn't know what a coach was. I didn't know yeah. what setting a table meant. Like I had no idea. And then they were like, that'll be five grand. And I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> and I just said yes. Um, to, to stuff like that over and over again. Mm. But you know what, you know, what was the only guiding map to that is I had to use my gut. Like, mm. um, it, I know if you've ever done like your fascination advantage, like I know one of the keys to me is feeling powerful and prestigious and that's yes, mm. how I fascinate people, but it's also how I know when things are right. So like, I just had to listen to my gut and say, yes, okay, I'll do that. That's awesome. You know, the thing is that that's not only great advice, but it's actually very gutsy to say yes, because many times we want all the circumstances to be right. We want everything to be perfect. We want all the things to, the, we want the stars to align. We want like the, the double shooting star. We want the rainbow. We want everything before we do anything. And I think sometimes just stepping out on a limb and saying yes is really the gutsiest thing we could do. Now, for the people listening who, who want to today to say yes, uh, to really ramping up their personal image, their brand, and being who they actually were created to be, what would be the three to five tips you would give them so that they could get started today to that better image? 
Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, number one, and this sounds like a airy fairy tip, but it's actually really important is just decide that you believe that anything is possible because when it mm. comes to image, it's like, Oh, you know, my car sucks. I can't clean it out. I don't have any clothes. You have all these excuses, but really it's just a decision of like, mm -hmm. all right, I believe that anything is possible. And I have faith that, you know, I can look and feel a certain way. Um, I mean, so that's number one. Number two really is going back to that exercise that I mentioned earlier, the more clarity that you can have around how you want to feel the better. And I'll take it a little right. bit further. What I always suggest to people is get two sticky notes and write those words that you come up with on each sticky note. One goes in your wallet. So if you're standing in a dressing room or you've gone shopping with friends or you're with your spouse and they're like, I love it. It's amazing. And you just don't know you have a tool. Here's your roadmap. Mm. Ask yourself and then you can make a decision. The other one goes in your closet and same thing. You put it on your wall when you get dressed. If you have to put something on and it's not right, you know it needs to go. Right. Um, and let's see. The last tip, like it's like the last one, I'm like, it has to be really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I think the key is just, I, don't know, I was going to say like really having, having faith in, in the vision of where mm. you're going and, and realizing that it's not about exactly who you are today. It's really like honoring what you're doing and creating mm. the image around that. And I mean, that, that's, that's a great tip. I mean, when, when you think about it, because the thing is that if, if you don't, uh, live by that. If you don't honor what you're doing, if you don't try to live by who you are, you're always going to be disappointed in who you've become. And um, so, so I love that, that advice. And I love the sticky note advice. I think that that's really uh, powerful for a person to always be reminded of, of what they should be doing to make sure that they enhance their, uh, their image. So, well, Lee, thank you so much for being here today. It's been a real treat having you on the show. And uh, for those of you guys who caught the tail end of this, we've been uh, talking to Lee Hayward, who is the author of Strategically Suited and the owner of Prom Pr Prosperous Image. Uh, Lee, where can people find you if they want more information about enhancing their personal brands? Yeah, absolutely. So you can definitely visit prosperousimage.com. And I know we mentioned the book a couple of times. And if anybody would like a copy of it, I'm happy to send you one. Just simply go to Prosperous Image and fill out a little a form on our contact page and mention the podcast and we'll get you one out. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Lee. I appreciate that. And for all of you guys who are listening, uh, like she mentioned, a free book is on the line. So don't delay. Make sure you go to the website and you can get the free book offer. Just uh, make sure you mention the Guts and Glory show uh, and you'll have a free book delivered to you. Uh, so there you have it, guys. Uh, Lee Hayward, helping clients get the brand image that they want. Anyone can do it, but guts, courage, and hard work is what it takes. And just remember, if you love this episode, be sure to subscribe so you never miss a show. You've been listening to The Guts and Glory Show. You've been listening to The Guts and Glory Show with Louise Scott. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to share. For more information on this episode, please see the show notes at www.gutsandgloryshow.com. And join us next time as we talk to another leader in business that had the guts to overcome all odds for the glory of success.